So the political angle, we spoke to Carl Rove earlier on the show. He said this is an opportunity for the president to turn the page. You get some wind at your back when you come back to the United States and to not blow that opportunity. Get off Twitter. Stop talking about Russia. Stop talking about collusion and refocus on the agenda. Do you agree, disagree with that? I think Carl is absolutely correct. The president should view this trip as the opportunity to change the narrative of what's been going on the past two weeks. He needs to come out of the next nine days with many different successes, which he's already had has with this agreement with Saudi Arabia that's being signed right now. And he then needs to show that he's done something with Israel, with the Vatican, with NATO, and uh, the G7. That would be something that the president and his team can turn around and say, look, while this investigation's going on, we're focusing on the real issues that matter to Americans. Mm -hmm. Americans don't care whether or not there's a special counsel. They care whether or not health, the cost of health care is getting lowered. They care whether or not people are going to be able to be safe at home. So that's where the president needs to show he's working in order to keep his support up. Evan, how does he get past the media? He's used his Twitter account to go over and around them. Uh, we saw the New York Times and the Washington Post release two stories right as Air Force One was taking off on Friday. Presumably time to make sure that this scandal doesn't go away as the opposition party. What should be his strategy to get a beyond an opposition party that is fighting him every single day? First of all, he needs to stop giving them oxygen. There seems to be something going on in the White House where it's gone past people in, say, the intelligence community or other aspects of the government that are deeply entrenched that are leaking. Uh, I think the inter-faction uh, rivalries within the White House are causing the leaks, especially the one yesterday about what he said to the Russian foreign minister, because that came from the White House, and Sean Spicer's statement essentially acknowledged that it happened. And I think he needs to sit his, all of his staff down and say, this stops right now. We're here to do a job for the American people. This is just the same old games as usual. Stop promoting yourselves. You work for me. If you don't like it, get out. Yeah. Do you think he needs more support from some, some of his Republican colleagues, some of the lawmakers that haven't seemed to really say much about what's going on or get behind him. A lot of them have their own races coming up uh, in a year time, so they're thinking about themselves and, and winning. But how important is it right now for the Republican Party to come together to rally behind their president? Well, I think the party, since the president took office, has had this weird relationship where the president and, say, congressional Republicans haven't felt 100% comfortable, like it's a natural fit yet. And they were starting to find that stride until about two weeks ago when things happened where Republicans looked at the poll numbers and looked at the severity of the accusations and said, we have to protect ourselves. Otherwise, it's Democrats who are going to be in power come after 2018, and they'll be ramming bills down yeah. our throats that none of us want. Yeah, we actually had Corey Lewandowski on, former campaign manager to, to Donald Trump, and, we, and he's mentioned that exact point. He said more Republicans, they need to stand behind their president. Take a listen to what he said. Look, I think the Republicans need to be unified on, in supporting the president. Uh, what we see is that his sharpest critics, including Nancy Pelosi and others, have said that there is nothing to this Russia investigation. There's no proof of collusion anywhere. So why they've appointed a, you know, individual to look into this with Robert Mueller, I don't understand. The Republicans should be unified. They should push back. And what they should do is focus on the president's agenda, which is tax cuts, repeal and replace with Obamacare, and getting a trillion dollar infrastructure spending through the Congress. Do you think this trip comes at the perfect time to press the reset button across the board? Well, at this point, anything would have been an excuse, a perfect excuse to press the reset button. I think this trip will help get President Trump away from the vast majority of the American press, so he won't be giving them as much ammunition and vice versa to uh, really attack him over. Mm -hmm. And if he can focus and stick to the very detailed uh, tr uh, plan for this trip, that will help keep some drama-free days from accumulating, which had been snowballing the past week. And and I th go ahead, please. Oh, no, if you take, right now on our screen, these are live images of the president walking out uh, of that ceremony with, uh, with everyone following, presumably his family, his administration, members of the uh, Saudi monarchy as well. You know, we're about to go, as soon as we get it, we're, as soon as we get it, we're about to go to, to Vice President Pence at Grove City College. He's in Pennsylvania. You know, on the political side, these images, these dual screens you see right here, the American people, they may see their president in battle, they hear all these headlines, but when they see images like this of, of President Trump, uh, a leader on the world stage, what kind of ammunition does that give him? Some political capital could he get from an average voter that sent him uh, to Washington to be a leader for our country? Well, it basically projects the image of, while there is some sort of chaos going on in the media here back at home, I went out and I did the serious job that you elected me to do. And he then can pivot and say, listen, these are the results I achieved while on this nine-day foreign trip. 
And that is very different from what is being talked about at home among the media and the chattering class. Absolutely. And we should mention that uh, from John Roberts, our chief White House correspondent, we're expecting an on-camera briefing with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and the Saudi foreign minister at 11 a.m. Eastern. We'll attempt to bring you that as well as what you're seeing on the right side of your screen, Vice President Mike Pence sitting down. That's Megan Smith who's speaking right now. She was chosen by her, her classmates uh, to give a speech before the vice president speaks at that commencement address. That's right there. Sometimes you just don't have enough screens uh, at this right. point. <laughs> Evan, if I could, we've got the... Um, do you t should we expect anything unique or different from the vice president in this commencement address, or do you expect him to, to stay pretty down the middle? I think the vice president's going to stay pretty down the middle and offer what everybody offers graduates at a commencement address. Talk about what the life ahead of them leads or, or where that road is going to go. Give them some inspiration. Tell them that, yes, sometimes it might be hard and you might get knocked down, but it's how you get up that matters. And I think most graduates want to hear that hopeful message because when they graduate from college, it's a very special time, and especially it's uh, special to have the Vice President of the United States addressing you. So he's you know. speaking in Grove City uh, in Pennsylvania. Their motto is because faith and freedom matter. Evan, something we have seen that's unique with this administration, uh, we saw recently with President Trump speaking at Liberty University, is they're not afraid to touch faith. They're not afraid to go there. There's nothing wrong with touching faith. Uh, I wish Democrats and even some Republicans would agree with that. I think that there are ways in which faith has promoted people and values and morality and compassion that every American, whether they're religious or not, should understand and embrace. I think that when you go out and touch messages of faith, you've been able to do, you're able to do more and show more compassion for common man. When you have Rex Tillerson speaking at 11 a.m., I, I, I don't know, I find it interesting that we're maybe not going to hear from the president first. We'll hear from the secretary and of state. I think he's with the foreign minister as well of Saudi Arabia speaking together at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Right. Is, does that strike you as, as interesting, Evan? We're going to hear from the secretary of state. What do you expect to hear from Rex Tillerson? I think Rex Tillerson is going to be talking about the partnership between the United States and Saudi Arabia, how we need to go forward in the new 21st century together, and how we can f confront radical Islamic terrorism, how we can confront ISIS, how we can help stabilize the world, how we can push back against Iran with its nuclear ambitions, and how we can make sure that the Iran deal, to the uh, extent that it can be even enforced because it's such a bad deal, is enforced, and we prevent Iran from taking uh, drastic actions, yep. how we can solve the crisis in Syria. Evan, do you anticipate questions about that deal? And, and do we, I don't know if we know whether they'll be taking questions or not, or just issuing a statement. Uh, if the American press gets a question, any chances that question is actually about the Saudi Arabian deal? No or, way. Or do they go automatically <laughs> right to something to, thousands of miles yeah, away? James Comey, first question. <laughs> <laughs> well, James Comey clearly is so in touch with the uh, Iranian deal that it's a no-brainer. No, <laughs> now, I think that the press corps will ask, or ask Secretary Tillerson if there are questions about the f trip. Because while they are talking about President Trump and what has happened the past two weeks, Secretary Tillerson is in no way, shape, or form able to by his office or qualified to discuss the past two weeks in terms of the domestic front. He's there to basically stabilize the region, to talk about how we can keep Syria safe, stop the atrocities that the Assad regime is committing, and to show that we can control, or pardon me, that we can help alleviate the pressure that has been building up in the Middle Eastern region and find an everlasting peace. Yeah, Evan, just to give people an update, the left side of the screen, the motorcade there in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia with President Trump, and on the right, Vice President Mike Pence um, about to give a commencement speech there at Grove City College. Speaking right now is Megan Smith. She's from Tyler, Texas. She was actually chosen to speak by her fellow classmates. How cool that must be to forever say that you introduced uh, the Vice President of the United States. Absolutely, and, and you talked about this earlier, Clayton, these, these two screen Saudi Arabia and Grove City Pennsylvania Pennsyl you know two places where energy has played an enormous role in world history, uh, such a dominant part of the, the Saudi Arabian economy, oil, for so long, yet technology and advances and exploration in the United States in places like Pennsylvania have reshuffled that deck as well. Yeah, it's fascinating to see. And, you know, it's interesting, Evan, that now we have this, we have this moment in time where we're not in debt to Saudi Arabia anymore. And as Charles Payne on our show earlier this morning pointed out, this is an opportunity for Saudi Arabia to lean on us instead of us having to lean on them for oil. They need skyscrapers. They need the resources that the United States can bring and the resources that we can export to that country. Yes, Charles Payne is absolutely right. 
it's actually a good thing that Saudi Arabia is now in the position where they're coming to us and asking for help. They're asking for resources. That's good for the American uh, economy. We get to buy or have sell goods that create jobs in Saudi Arabia and the United States. Right. Whether it's iron yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to build those skyscrapers so and everything on, else. On the left side of the screen there, just a few moments ago, it was the signing of the arms deal, the economic deal, $110 billion, really a moment in history, an important one. Um, Evan, you think about... Um, this time in history uh, with with what is going on in, in Saudi Arabia um, and Rex Tillerson, who we've who I don't think we talk enough about because it seems like President Trump has really given him yeah. um, a role as secretary of so. state, a big role. And he's about to speak at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We'll bring that to you with the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia. But it seems like he's in every meeting with the president when anyone is visiting our country. And the president is really relying on him to help him navigate these um, sometimes testy foreign uh, relationships. Well, Rex Tillerson is a essentially served as the Secretary of State for a private company in Exxon. He knows what to do to have diplomatic uh, conversations with world leaders. The president, by his own admission, hasn't done that to the extent that Rex Tillerson has done. And I think that's a net positive for the president.